Most of my sessions targeting smooth hounds on the south coast have been at night. In late May and June, I used to travel long distances to fish venues such as Pagham and Selsey. In order to get back home at a reasonable time, I needed a high tide to be between about 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. If high tide was during the day, then Westfield Common in Southampton Water is to be my standby venue. Smooth hounds feed here during the day, and this video covers my approach to catching them. It also includes a tutorial on how to make pulley drop down rigs, which are my favourite rigs for this type of fishing. Like the rest of Southampton Water, there are double tides here, and I've arrived about an hour before the top of the first high tide. I'm fishing at distance and using peeler crab as bait. It helps if you can cast about 100 yards. With my continental rods and 30 pound braid, I don't need to put a lot of effort into my casting. An overhead thump is good enough, but if I wanted extra distance, I might try casting off the ground. I don't normally have to do that though, since I'll be looking to fish when the wind conditions are favourable, normally off your back. For this type of fishing, I use leads with wires, since you're normally leaving your baits out for quite some time. And there's a good chance that weed will accumulate on your line and drag your rig out of position. And that can become a nightmare when you're fishing with two rods. Although the tide's still coming in, the water movement's from right to left, so the first cast has gone down drift. I'm making sure that my second cast is going well up drift. I'm expecting my rigs to be out there for quite some time, and the last thing I want happening is for a great big clump of weed to drag on my line and pull my second rig down to where the first one is. With both rigs out, I'll run through the locational details, first with some of the main venues on the west side of Southampton Water, and then those on the east. I'll then home in on the Netley to Hamble area. This area can all produce smooth hounds in the summer, but I tend to go between Netley Sailing Club and Ensign Way. Westfield Common is a wooded area of waterfront at Hamble Le Rice. It's quite close to the BP Oil Depot and the Industrial Estate, which is accessed by Ensign Way. To get to the bit on fishing, you drive down to the end of Coach Road and then to Westfield Common and then follow the private road which gets you to some public parking areas. I've identified where I fish for this video. There's a little tidal pool, so I'm winding my reel handle until there's a slight bend in my rod tip. I'm not expecting shy bites when fishing crab for smooth hounds. Either the rod will pull right over, or it will spring back. However, I don't want to see if anything else is attacking the bait, so I do want to make sure that I keep a tight line. That will allow me to gauge whether I need to bring in my rigs to re-bait. I can now put my box of crabs back in a cool bag and settle down for what's likely to be quite a long wait. As with the other fishing here, I'm likely to get my bites between the two high tides and just as it's ebbing on the second high tide. Others might catch at different times, but that's what tends to happen for me. A quick pan round the area, then we'd have a quick look at my baits and rigs, then I'll run through a quick tutorial on how I make my pulley drop down rigs, which some refer to as pulley droppers. Bait elastic is a requirement that's needed to secure the crabs onto your hook. Damp seaweed seems to help keep them in better condition. My pulley drop down rigs are both panelled, with the one on the left having a semicircle hook as the panel hook. I tend to mount my crabs in the same way as I do for bass. Rather than taking all the shell and legs off, I want them to look as natural as possible. In making these rigs, I like to incorporate impact shields. The one in the middle here is specifically for off the ground casting. Since you can change the snurds, they're quite a versatile rig. The one on the left is for place fishing. I'm going to run through how I make the one on the right. First, starting with the components. I find a 3.0 at about the right size for crab fishing. A weak link clip is needed to facilitate the drop down feature. This holds up your snud for casting by a genie bent rig clip. I first start off by cutting a metre length of 80 pound rig body line. Since you're fishing for big fish, you want your gear to be quite robust. You can always have lighter snuds, but your main rig body needs to be quite strong. So I wouldn't go for anything less than, say, £60. I'm using a union knot to tie on the weak link clip to one end of the line. Holding the clip with a pair of pliers helps when tightening the knot.
Then I thread on a 6mm bead, then a large swivel. This is used to attach to reel line. This gives your rig that pulley component. Then goes on another 6mm bead, followed by the Genie bent rig clip. I follow that with another 6mm bead. I then thread on a crimp. I generally find it's a good idea to cut your line at an angle if you're having difficulty in putting it onto the thicker line. The crimp is followed by a larger 8mm bead. And that's followed by the impact shield. A vent tie on a genie clip attached to a swivel. This is used to connect with your lead. Once again, a simple uni knot is used for this. I tend to have a habit of twisting the line first before passing the end of a line through the loop. Three turns is sufficient for a thick line. Once again, the pliers come in handy for tightening the knot when you're using a thick line. Before squeezing the crimp in place, I position the impact shield fairly close to the lead clip, but making sure there's still enough space for a little bit of movement. After casting, the impact of water Remove your impact shield up the line, therefore releasing your hook. At the same time, your broad and bottom clip will release your bent clip, allowing the snud to drop down the line. Snud lengths can be up to about 75cm if your main body line is a metre in length. Here I'm just tying on a single 3 0 to 40 pounds snud length. This is a good setup for rays, but I'd normally panel my rig if I'm fishing for smooth house. And if using a large hook bait like crab, that top hook is likely to be a 2-0 big mouth or a 2-0 semi-circle hook. Once again, I've used a uni knot here and the tag end needs to be cut off. A small swivel is tied to the other end of the snud. One main advantage of using a drop down rig than say using a normal pulley rig is that you can tie up a large range of snuds and have these already baited up and on standby for changing over. The rig is now finished so I just put on a lead, assemble it with a snud in place and then demonstrate how it works. The swivel of a snud is put onto the bent rig clip. This clip is what keeps the snud up in flight and also allows you to swap snuds over relatively quickly. The hook is placed into the impact shield. You pull up your snud against the main body line whilst keeping the line fairly taut. You then couple the rotten bottom clip with a bent clip. In practice, the top swivel will be attached to your shock leader. So this completed rig will now be ready for casting once you put your bait on. This is what happens when your rig hits the water after casting. The clips decouple and your stud slides down the body line. 
your hook bait would end up on the bottom and trailing well beyond your lead. Now back to the session. It's likely to be quite a long wait and there are already some doubts creeping in. The water seems to be a little bit clear for my liking. Now the top of the first high tide and there seems to be a few little movements on my left hand rod. Those continue but don't result in a proper bite so it's still worth a strike but I don't expect anything to be on. Something has obviously been plucking away at the bait could just be crabs. We are the reason why smooth hounds come up Southampton water and I found in the past that the crabs do strip your bait even if you are using crab. There is a fair amount of weed about but it's not too much of a problem and it's quite easy to take off. The hook bait's completely gone, so it was worth bringing my rig in. The need to rebait allows me to show how I mount my crabs. The elastic helps them stay on that little bit longer and you've got to make sure that the hook point is still showing. You need to protrude from the bait and if you're using two hooks I like to have them pointing in opposite directions. The finished job with a semicircle hook at the top and a very vast big mouth 3 o at the bottom. Before casting this fresh bait out I bring in the other rod. As my rig approaches, there's a big disturbance in the water in front of me. A couple of large fish swirl and some bait fish scatter. Perhaps I should have been fishing two yards out rather than a hundred yards. I suspect that the bigger fish are bass, so they're worth having a go for. Since they've been chasing small bait fish, I'll have a go for a little metal lure. I don't have a spinning rod with me, but I do have one of my Arcadias, so I'll set that up to have a quick go for them. I do carry a box with a few metal lures just in case and with the water being clear close in they may have a go at one of these.
By the time I've set this up, those larger fish may well have gone, but still worth a try anyway. They seem to have gone from close in, but there are some disturbances a little bit further out. It's a bit of a distraction from fishing for smooth hounds, but I can't really let it pass by. So I just chuck in my crab bait close in, see if there's any response to that. This isn't the ideal setup for close in range, but you never know. Okay, so I didn't think that was far enough out, so I'm recasting it. Probably the sound of my lead going in would have frightened anything away, but I'll give it half an hour or so. I can now remove a weed from the rig of my other rod. The bait on that one has been untouched. So this is how I clip up my pulley dropper.
crab baits out, I've still got an urge to try and catch something on a metal lure. Just as I thought I was wasting my time, something has a go at the lure. Okay, so it's not one of those bigger fish that surface close in. However, I'm still pretty pleased with that since I've avoided the plank. So that's my first lure fish caught this year. The rod fishing the crab close in has now been recast at distance. However, whilst waiting for something to happen, I'm still keeping myself active and trying to see if I can catch something else on that lure. I'm hoping that that little bass wasn't just caught by accident and something else will have a go. didn't take very long to get my second one, not much bigger than the first, but at least I now know that the first one wasn't just caught by chance.
I don't want the spinning to be too much of a distraction, so I've brought in one of my baits. Checked it, it hasn't been touched, so it's going back out again. I had a few more goes of a metal lure between the two high tide states and ended up with two more little fish. No size of the bigger one so. Approaching the top of the second high tide, I get a couple of knocks on one of my bait rods. This was clearly not a smooth hound, but it's worth striking into nonetheless. I did feel something on, but then it came off. The crab had been split in two, with the top hook having moved up the snud. I've got a feeling that's probably an eel. As the tide starts to recede, I get a proper pull down on my other rod. This is the sort of bite I've been waiting for, and I know I'm into a decent fish.
Well, that's what I've come here for. So I'm pleased I've got a result. It's far from the biggest I've had here. And I've had had one or two battles when I just couldn't get the fish in at all. On one occasion, the fish just kept going until the hook pulled out. However, I have a feeling that that might have been a stingray or a taupe because I had no chance of getting it in. Still, I'm more than happy to catch this one and the semi-circle hook has done its job, lodged in its mouth. The forceps end of my scissors were needed to remove the hook this time. Not huge, but I'm glad to say that once again Westfield Common has not let me down.